Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our daily devotion and prayer time. Um, it's good to be back with you. Thank you for your prayers for my family and I as we were away. And it is good to be back reading the Word of God and praying with you each day. We are continuing in the book of Romans, picking up where we left off. We had just finished Romans chapter 8 which, uh, as we discussed, was the conclusion of what is commonly known as um, the Romans Road, um, at least the major part of it. And we move into Romans 9 today, and, and what we see here is Paul's um, great love and desire for his people, the Jewish people, um, his love for them and his desire that they would come to know Christ um, as the true Messiah. We pick up uh, in verse one and Paul says, with Christ as my witness, I speak with other utter truthfulness. My conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm it. My heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief for my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters. I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ, if that would save them. They are the people of Israel, chosen to be God's adopted children. God revealed his glory to them. He made covenants with them and gave them his law. He gave them the privilege of worshiping him and receiving his wonderful promises. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are their ancestors, and Christ himself was an Israelite as far as his human nature is concerned. And he is God, the one who rules over everything and is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. Well then, has God failed to fulfill his promise to Israel? No, for not all who are born into the nation of Israel are truly members of God's people. Being descendants of Abraham doesn't make them truly Abraham's children. For the scriptures say, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted, though Abraham had other children too. This means that Abraham's physical descendants are not necessarily children of God. Only the children of the promise are considered to be Abraham's children. For God had promised, I will return about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. This son was our ancestor, Isaac. When he married Rebekah, he gave birth to twins. But before they were born, before they had done anything good or bad, she received a message from God. This message shows that God chooses people according to his own purposes. He calls people, but not according to their good or bad works. She was told, your older son will serve your younger son. In the words of the scriptures, I love Jacob, but I rejected Esau. So there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot that, uh, that Paul talks about. The, the main thing to understand is his great love for the, the nation of Israel and his desire for them to come, know, come to know Christ as the true Messiah. But the reality is that, is that Paul understood that the connection he was making between the nation of Israel and between the nation of, of Christians, if you will, was, was a direct correlation. You see, God chose the children of Israel, but not everyone within that chosen uh, realm of people would accept that calling. The same is true for uh, followers of Christ. Everyone is called to be a follower of Christ, but not everyone chooses to accept that calling. This is a very difficult thing for, it was a very difficult thing for Paul to understand, and it's a very difficult thing for us to wrap our heads around. Paul had to come to the understanding that not everyone in the nation of Israel would be a true follower of God. Not everyone would, uh, would be part of the promise um, that God made to Abraham. And the same is true looking forward to the, the nation of Christianity, the nation of Christ followers, not everyone, sadly, will come to know Christ. Now, our desire and our goal is that everyone would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. In fact, Scripture tells us that that's what God's heart is, that none would perish, 
that none would be lost. But the reality is God has given us free choice and free will and has made it clear what what the what is required to be a true child of God. As Paul said, it's not based on anything that we do, not our good works, not our bad works. Nothing accepts us or rejects us from God. It is simply the blood of Jesus, what he did on the cross, and our willingness to say yes to what he did. As I said, this is tough to take because the reality is what it means is that there are going to be people that we know, sadly, who reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what do we do about that? Well, we could throw our hands up in the air and we could say there's nothing to do, or we could do the opposite. We can pray for them constantly, number one. And number two, we could love them with the love that only Jesus can give. You see, we often are mistaken that we are the ones that need to fix people, that need to change people. That's God's responsibility. Our responsibility is to share Jesus with them and to love them like he would. So let that be our challenge today. Let that be our goal today as we start off uh, another day um, on this Tuesday. Let's, let's love people like Jesus would. Let's be honest with them. Let's be sincere with them. But let's love them with the love that only Jesus can give and leave the rest up to him. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the words of Paul. We thank you for his heart for, for your people, for the nation of Israel. Father, help us to have the same heart for those who do not know Jesus. Help us to live every day striving to share the good news, to share the gospel, and to love Jesus the way that you love them. Live through us today, we pray. May your Holy Spirit work through us today, we pray. And it's in the name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Well, I trust you will have a terrific Tuesday. As I said, it is great to be back with you. And I look forward to the days ahead as we continue to journey through the Word of God together and pray together each day. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care.